everyone and welcome to all about chemistry now today in this video we are going to talk about wave function we are going to understand that what exactly a wave function is i am quite sure that whenever you will study about quantum chemistry you will always get to see this particular term wave function everywhere like the quantum chemistry is full of this particular term wave function each and every place whenever you will start studying any topic from it you will get to see this particular term so what exactly it is right so i'll take you a little back in time when people were studying light actually they were quite convinced with some experiments like photoelectron effect that light has a particle nature whereas there were some experiments uh, like your young stubble slit experiment which says that light has a wave nature now these are two things which are very contradictory right so the confusion about the nature of light came to an end by de broglie he gave a very well known dual nature theory according to this theory light has both the natures it has particle nature as well as the wave nature simultaneously mathematically it was given as lambda is equals to h over p uh, where lambda was the wavelength associated with that particular wave h was your planck's constant and p was your linear momentum now when this particular theory was accepted it was said that yes light has this particular phenomena and was it was a theory later on with the experiment of davison and germer it has been proved that yes the de broglie theory is actually correct and light has both these natures so it has been told that why not other particle so the reason provided was that that as you increase the mass of the particle the wavelength will decrease because wavelength in the equation was inversely proportional to the mass of the particle so if you have a bigger mass just like me you we all uh, or other heavenly bodies if you consider any of these bigger bodies their mass is quite huge so the wavelength associated with them will be too small to be recognized whereas if you go for microscopic or subatomic particles basically you will find out that their masses are very small and if the mass is small it will have a considerable wavelength let's talk about electrons now so if a electron is a subatomic particle having a very tiny mass it should have a wavelength associated with that so here comes your wave function so when we study quantum mechanics we deal with a particle in very small mass region that is we we deal with the subatomic particles just right so over there the masses of the particles are too small so the wavelength associated with them will have a certain considerable values so if you know that a subatomic particle having a very tiny mass will have certain wavelength associated with that so then curiosity builds up and we want to know that actually what is going to be that wave and how is that wave going to look like to help you out with that ewing schrodinger came up with a expression which told us that how mathematically a wave will look like now before going into all these things let's get back to the term itself wave function what does this term tells you okay so everything is being explained in the term itself wave and function let's talk about function first of all what does this function means in mathematics function is a kind of a output generator where you put some values at the input side and you get a particular value at the output side very well known functions which you already know are function expressing the straight line that is y is equals to x or y is equals to mx plus c uh, also you know the various other functions like a function for parabola uh, then a function for sine wave or cosine wave on the other hand wave as a term tells you that a motion is to and fro that means it is going in the forward and backward direction or it can be going in the positive and negative direction simultaneously so that means the well known wave functions which we know are sine function and cosine function schrodinger took all this information and he generated a particular schrodinger wave equation so if you take your schrodinger's equation and if you plot it against x and if you put different values of x so you'll get wave function over here psi was your wave function where psi represent basically your wave function so if you plot it on the graph you will see a pattern right now this particular pattern what does it actually means is it showing you that how your electron is moving in the space or what actually it means so schrodinger wanted to interpret it although he he mathematically derived the equation but he was not able to interpret it properly so he took examples from the common nature around us he said that just like if you put a stone inside the water you get a wave of like ripple of waves right similarly when you have a string attached to a particular side and if you move that string that string is going to produce a wave like pattern right 
so that water waves or these string waves basically they are nothing but they are telling you the motion of water in the space so is this particular wave function telling you about the motion of the particle because we are considering electron so is it telling us about the motion of the electron so he uh, tried to interpret it in this way he said okay uh, the wave function which you can plot according to my equation which is actually nothing but a charge density it's how your charge density is moving in the space but this interpretation was actually wrong it's quite funny right the person who gave you mathematical proof or mathematical uh, expression for your wave function he was not able to interpret the equation properly later on for our res rescue max born came and he interpreted his equation he told that actually in the schrodinger's equation this psi or the wave function whatever you have it is not telling you about the motion or the movement of the electron actually if you take that particular wave function take the absolute uh, value of that that is if you put it in the inside the modulus and square that value up you are going to actually get the probability of finding electron in that region so this was something very important and this is something very fundamental in quantum mechanics that if you have a wave function you take that wave function take mod of that square that up and what you are going to get is actually probability of finding particle and since that wave function was a function of x so this is going to give you the probability of finding out that particle at that exact value of x so if you have a particular wave function which you can see right now on your screen if i square that up you can see a pattern right now on your screen so it is going to tell you that these are going to be the regions having more probability of finding electron whereas there are some regions where there is less probability of finding the electron now this particular thing was actually very very important in quantum mechanics and these are the fundamentals of it where all the theories and other things which is developed in future on quantum mechanics is actually dependent upon well now you understand what psi square actually is it's your probability density so you might be thinking that what actually psi is what psi actually is if it is not the motion of electrons if it is not the charge density moving so what actually the psi is all about well in quantum mechanics there are some things there are some uh, terms which are still to be interpreted properly there are different explanation in different books you will find out that psi actually represents a wave function but that particular understanding of wave function is not exact so as far as now the psi does not have any proper interpretation for a particular particle but when you take a square of that psi it has a very important role and it tells you about that where you have the highest probability or where what probability of finding electron you have for that particular value of x so in quantum mechanics there are a lot of things to be explored there are a lot of things to be understood so what we got to know in today's video first that a subatomic particle in quantum mechanics will have a wave associated with that and that is very fundamental and that particular wave will have a wave function with it and that particular wave function will have all the properties of that particular particle if you take that wave function and if you square that up you are going to get probability of finding the particle at that particular point now although the topic of this particular video was very fundamental and very basic for the quantum chemistry point of view but i just wanted to make quantum chemistry a bit familiar with all of you especially to those uh, who don't have much interest in that so if my video helped you to build up a little bit of interest in quantum mechanics do let me know in the comment section give a like to this particular video subscribe to the channel if you have not not subscribed it yet i'll come up with the other terms and the other specific topics of quantum chemistry in this particular series of videos so tell me how you liked it and uh, your likes your subscription your comments all motivates me to make much more videos much helpful videos to all of you thank you so much for watching and i hope whatever i explained you is much clear to you and i'll see you guys in the next video till then have a great day